And do you realize that when you're giving thanks in everything, you are in the will of God. You're not finding it. You're not one day discovering it. You're not, you don't have an open door into it. You are in it immediately. You are immediately translated into the will of God. Bam, you're there. I'm in the will of God. The moment that I give God praise, I truly am in his perfect will for my life. And you will truly be in his perfect will for your life when you give him thanks and give him praise. Look at this verse in James chapter one, verse 17. This is this is a gratitude verse. He said, James chapter one, verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from the father. It comes from the father. Everything that is good in your life came from the father. It came from God. It didn't come from you. It didn't come from me. It came from God. There's nothing that we can truly lay claim of and say, that's my doing. No, it was the Lord that gave you the idea. It was the Lord that gave you the strength. It was the Lord that gave you the wisdom. It was the Lord that gave you the ability. It was the Lord that gave you everything you have. And it will make you thankful when you realize from whence your help comes from, right? When you realize where your help came from, it'll make you thankful. When you realize he's been merciful to you, think about the mistakes that you've made. Think about the sins you've committed. Think about the, 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 the trouble you've gotten yourself into. And look at how God has not held that against you. He's brought you out of it every time. He's delivered you from it every time. He's rescued you from the darkest uh, pain and, and problems of your life. Life, give him thanks and give him praise. And you, what, what do we need to do? What do we need? What do we need to do to become thankful people? We need to become focused people. We need to focus on what God has done rather than focusing on what we don't have and focusing on what he hasn't done. We need to focus on what we do have and what he has done for us. And that's why I took you back to Luke 17, verse 15. Remember, 10 lepers were cleansed, but only one turned back to give God thanks. 10 of them were cleansed, 10 lepers. Listen, leprosy is not something to trifle with. Leprosy was something that was a disease that not only did it send them to leper colonies, but people that had leprosy, it would literally devour their skin. It would literally, their, 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 they, would, they, wouldn't feel, they couldn't feel pain. So if they put their hand in a hot fire, they wouldn't even feel the fire. Their hand would literally burn off without them feeling it. And their, and their fingers and their toes and their faces, they would just begin to deteriorate. Their bodies would begin to melt away and deteriorate because of the disease in their life. So to be cleansed of something that, that bad, that, that evil, that punitive and punishing of a sickness and a disease should make anybody thankful. But yet, as is common, there's usually just one out of 10 that are really grateful. 10 out of 10 received the healing, but only one out of 10 turned back to give God thanks. Do you know every time you come to church, you're like the one turning back to give God thanks. You know every time you tithe and give to God in the offering, you know what? You're the one out of the 10 that is turning back to give God thanks. You know that every time you share the gospel with somebody else and you just invite them to church or tell them about Jesus, you know what you're doing? You're one of the 10 that are showing gratitude. You're turning back to give God thanks because everything we do in our lives is a overflow of our gratitude or our ingratitude for where we're at in our life. Everything we do flows from a sense of gratitude and gratefulness or ungratefulness and unthankfulness. That no, there's nothing you do in life that doesn't flow from one of those things. If you complain, that flows from an ingratitude or ungratefulness or unthankfulness. If you praise, 
that flows from a gratefulness. If you give something to somebody, it flows from a gratefulness that you've been given something and you've been given enough to be able to be generous with somebody else. Everything we do flows from what we're focused on. Either we're focused on the good that God has done in our lives or we're focused on the bad. And that's what made the difference in this man's life. All 10 of them were cleansed, but notice, then one of them, when he saw, when he saw that he was healed, all of them were healed. But when one of them saw that he was healed, that doesn't just mean he noticed it, it means he focused on it. All of them knew and noticed that they were healed, but only one of them focused on it. And as he focused on what happened in his life, as he focused on the fact that I was a leper and I have just been healed, he turned back. And that word is where we get, get the word repentance from. You see, he didn't repent of his sins and then God healed him. God healed him and it caused him to turn in a new direction in life. What really produces repentance in people's lives is when they see the goodness of God, when they see how good God has been. The Bible says it's his goodness and it's his loving kindness that leads us to repentance, which means it turns us in a new direction. This guy was turned in a new direction. And you know what new direction he was turned in? He, was, he wasn't turned into a, a, the direction of being a holy roller, being you know, self-righteous, arrogant, prideful, and think I'm better than all these other guys. No, what, what did he turn to? He turned to God in gratefulness, gratitude, glory, and praise. The, the idea that repentance is somehow the, the ability to never do anything wrong again is, or, or the ability to turn from all the bad you've done, it's not turning from the bad, it's turning from bad thinking. It's turning from a thankful, thanklessness to a thankfulness. It's, it's, it's discovering that God in his infinite mercy and grace has been good to you though you didn't deserve it, and that turns you back to him to do what? He turns back, that's his repentance, and he praises God with a loud voice. Notice, he didn't praise God with a loud voice because he's, you know, auditioning for the choir. He didn't praise God with a loud voice because he wants everybody to hear him sing. He didn't praise God with a loud voice because he thinks, well, I'm baritone or I'm a tenor and I'm pretty, pretty good and I just want people to hear me. No, he praised God with a loud voice because of the excitement that his heart was filled with. I have been healed of this leprosy. Folks, we all have had leprosy. It's called sin. Sin is the leprosy that destroys. Sin is the leprosy that condemns. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. And we've all been cleansed from that leprosy, but only one out of 10 of every people is gonna turn back and be grateful and thankful and fall down and glorify him and praise him and give him thanks. And I wanna be one of those 10, how about you? Look, I tell you this, Romans 1.21, we've talked about this verse, but let me show it to you again. In the King James Bible, it says, when they, um, because they knew God, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful. And look at what happens. After you're not thankful, when you're not thankful, you become vain in your imagination. And I studied this word to be vain in your imagination. I studied it for the last several weeks just to really be sure I got a hold of what is the byproduct of unthankfulness? It's to become vain in your imaginations or futile. The word is also futile in your thinking. Now the word futile, this word in the, in the Aramaic and the Greek language is translated as this. The word vain or the word futile, it is translated as this. Are you ready for this? To be aimless and to be without purpose to be without aim and to be without purpose, the absence of purpose or the failure to attain any true purpose. In other words, when you're unthankful, it will produce a failure to attain any true purpose. You'll never experience true purpose in life until you're thankful because unthankfulness produces a lack of true 
purpose and a lack of aim. You become aimless. In other words, your life is constantly missing the target. Monday misses the target. Tuesday misses the target. You're aimless. You're just shooting off your life. And it's not going in a right direction. It's not, it doesn't have any aim. But when you are thankful, it produces aim. It guides and directs your life into the will of God. And in fact, and in fact causes you to immediately be in the will of God the moment that you are thankful. In 1 Thessalonians, I'll come back to that, that word in a minute if we have time, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, remember this one? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything and in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Now think about this. I used to preach... And there's some truth to it, but it's more accurate to say what I'm about to say. But I used to preach, well, when you're, when you're thankful, it will catapult you into the will of God. It will, it will open the door for you to find the will of God. But then I realized that's not what it's saying. It's actually saying when you give, when you give thanks in all things, you're in the will of God. You're not being launched into it. You are immediately in it. It's not opening the door into the will of God. It's not setting you up to find the will of God. The will of God is to give thanks. The greatest purpose, the greatest will of God. I think everybody, if we, if we said, what's your number one desire in life? If you're a Christian, your number one desire is to find the will of God, is to be in the will of God. There's no more dangerous place in this world than to be out of the will of God. And there's no more safer, safer place in this world than to be in the will of God. God. And do you realize that when you're giving thanks in everything, you are in the will of God. You're not finding it. You're not one day discovering it. You're not, you don't have an open door into it. You are in it immediately. You are immediately translated into the will of God. Bam, you're there. I'm in the will of God. The moment that I give God praise, I truly am in his perfect will for my life. And you will truly be in his perfect will for your life when you give him thanks and give him praise. No more searching, no more trying to discover what's my calling, what's my destiny, what's God's will for my life. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Now, what does our list consist of today? Three things that if you realize these three things, you will thank God forever. You'll live in a life of thanksgiving. If you think on and realize and focus on these three things, what are they? Number one, number one, give God thanks that your sins have been forgiven. Give God thanks that your sins have been forgiven. In Romans chapter four, verse seven, in the Amplified Bible, look at what it says. Romans chapter four, verse seven. Blessed and happy and to be envied are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered up and completely buried. Jesus has buried your sins in the depths of the sea completely. I think sometimes this is, we need to make a list. Here's our list today. Our list is number one, I am thankful that my sins are forgiven. My list starts with all of my sins are forgiven. And when I realize all of my sins are forgiven, look at what happens. I'm blessed, I'm happy, I'm to be envied. The world starts envying your life because you realize your sins are forgiven. And then you know what? You can introduce to them the forgiveness that Jesus offers them as well, because he's not offering it to you without offering it to them as well. Everybody has the right or has the ability to receive forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. We don't get forgiven because we're Catholic. We don't get forgiven because we're Pentecostal. We don't get forgiven because we're charismatic or, or, or Baptist or, or, um, or Methodist. No, no, no. We get, we, we get forgiven because Jesus' blood was shed for our sins. And all you have to do is simply receive it. Receive it. It's a gift. That's why it's called forgiveness, because it's God giving you some ness before you deserve it. Forgiveness. It's God giving to you the ness before you've earned it, deserved it, even asked for it. Forgiveness. That's why you got to stop waiting for somebody to apologize before you forgive them, because it's not forgiveness if they have to give you something to get it. It's a gift. And when you realize it's a gift that God gives you, it makes you happy and it causes you to be thankful. So number one, what is on our list today, our gratitude list is number one, I'm thankful that all of my sins are forgiven. And you know, sometimes it may require for you to make a list of your sins. 
not so that you can beat yourself up about them, but so that you can go, wow, he forgave me of that, and 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 he forgave me of, oh my God, the more you realize how much he's forgiving you of, the more you love him, the more you're grateful, the more you're thankful, the more you're humble. Because thankfulness, thankfulness requires two things. Thankfulness requires two things, humility. So whenever anything good happens, you realize that it came from God. That's humility. And it requires a memory, a good memory. So you have to remember when you are when you remember what God has done, it makes you thankful. When you realize the good that God has done only came from him, the good in your life only came from him. That's humility. That makes you thankful. And when you remember by making a list of the things that God has done for you, sometimes I like to remember my sins, not because I'm remembering them so that I can feel bad about them again. I'm remembering them so that I can truly appreciate all that he's forgiven me of. Second thing that on our list today to on our gratitude list is number one, we're thanking God for the fact that all of our sins are forgiven. And number two, we're thanking God that he hears us when we cry. Psalm 116, verse one. And when I say cry, I mean whether it's prayer, whether when you pray, when you're when you're anxious, when you're feeling afraid and any time you even utter a word to God from your heart, he hears you. When you utter a cry of help, help, he hears you. God, I'm so broken. He hears you. God, I'm worried about this. He hears you. You say, are you sure he hears you? Yes, he hears you, because look at what David said. He said, I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my voice and he heard my prayers. And look at what he says in verse two. He says, and because he's inclined his ear to me. I'm going to call on him as long as I live. You see. If you call on somebody and they don't answer, you probably stop calling them soon. Right. If you try to talk to somebody, and say, I got to just share my heart with somebody. And they're like, mm hmm, mm hmm. They're on their phone. Mm hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah. Mm hmm. Can you say it again? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Guess what? You're not going to be calling on them the rest of your life. David said, I'm going to call on him as long as I live. Why? Because he's he's he pays attention. He listens. I want to thank God today. That's on my gratitude list. He listens. He's the best listener in the world. His ears are inclined. They're bent towards you. He's ready to talk to you. His arms are open wide. His mouth is shut so that you can speak freely and tell him everything you feel. Tell him everything that's hurt. Tell him everything that hurts you. Tell him everything that you're struggling with. And he hears you. I'm not saying to learn the habit of complaining. I'm just saying learn the habit of transparency and honesty with God. And you will find yourself being a praiser when you realize, wow, he heard me and he didn't reject me. He heard me and he didn't push me away. He heard me and he didn't rebuke me. He heard me and he didn't forsake me. In fact, he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You mean as long as I stay silent, right, Lord? No, I will never leave you or forsake you. You mean I can tell you anything I feel and you will not leave me or forsake me? That's right. I will never leave you or forsake you. If you failed, if you blew it, just come to me, God says, come to me and come to me for my mercy and come to me for my grace and I will hear and I will listen. And you know what? That will make you fall in love with him more than ever before, because you will always fall in love with people that really listen. They really listen. They're not just waiting till you're done talking so they can tell you what they think, but they're really listening. And there's no sweeter words than to hear somebody say, I heard what you said. I heard everything you said. And then you say, thanks for listening. You see, this creates a dynamic relationship and intimacy when you realize he listens and you just say, thank you for listening. And he says, thank you for listening because I'm looking for my kids to listen to my voice, too. And God loves it when you listen. 
And we learn to listen because he listened first. He heard our cry. He sent his son. He heard our pain. He sent his son. He heard our fears. He sent his son. He heard our anxieties. He sent his son. He heard us and he responded. And that's why I'm grateful and I'm thankful and I'll never stop thanking him for hearing me and listening to me and having a heart that as soon as my voice, he knows my voice, he knows my heart, he knows what I'm going through and he's willing to listen without judgment. He's willing to give without without holding it against me. He's willing to to help me without reproach, without condemnation, without judgment, without looking down on me. Thank God for a father who listens. And then number three, as we close, number three is thank him. Number one, that your all your sins are forgiven. Thank him that he hears you when you cry, hears you when you pray. And third, thank him that the battle is already won. The battle is already won. You know, when Jehoshaphat was about to go into battle against all of the enemies of Judah and Israel, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and spoke to the people. And in verse 15 of First Chronicles, chapter 20, said this, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great army against you, for the battle is not yours but it's God's. The battle is not yours, but it's God's. You know what our battle is? Our battle is to believe that it's already won. Jesus already did it. He said it is finished. Mission accomplished. The battle is won. All we do now is give him thanks and give him praise. Well, while we just celebrated Independence Day in America, at least, and not Thanksgiving, it's actually Thanksgiving that's the most liberating way to live. Imagine living every day of your life with joy, peace, better health, spirit, soul, and body. That's what happens when you live a life of thanks and gratitude. Thanksgiving is a really a reflex. It's not a it's not a ritual. It's a reflex to everything God has done for you. This is how to truly walk in God's will and purpose for your life. It's gratitude. It brings the happiness everyone seeks. Romans 4, 17 says happy are those whose sins have been forgiven and whose sins have been buried, completely buried, one translation says. That's why the number one thing on our list today, our gratitude list starts with all of our sins are forgiven. They're buried. All your sins, past, present, and future are already forgiven, all because of what Jesus did on the cross. Second, remember, just as a reminder, our list on our list of gratitude is God hears our voice. He hears our heart. Psalm 116 says, as long as I live I'll keep praying to him who stoops down to listen and hear my heart's cry. And number three, finally, the battle is over. Even better than that, the word of God says the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. Our battle is to simply believe that Jesus did it all when he said it is finished and breathed his last on the cross. All we do now is give him thanks and give him praise. That's how we walk in faith and true joy and happiness will be yours. And now if you're able to just lift your hands and to God and repeat this after me, just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Just start right now, just say, I thank you that all my sins are forgiven. I thank you that you hear my cry and I thank you that you don't, I don't need to fight anymore. You have my battles, my battles are yours and I rest in your beautiful love. Just say that I rest in your beautiful love for me in Jesus' name. Now listen, another really important thing today If you haven't received Jesus, the most important thing, actually, if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, let me pray with you right now, right where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you're thinking about doing. It's all about to change. Yes, Jesus is that good. Just pray this out loud after me or or take this prayer to somebody who needs salvation. Just say, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. From this moment forward, my sins are washed away by your precious blood. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen, congratulations. First of all, if you prayed along with me, you are now a child of God. Welcome to the family. Please email me at the address on your screen and I'll send my free book called The Power of a New Life to take you through the next steps of your new walk with God. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And before I finish today, I want you to know that We in this ministry are on a mission. I'm on a mission with you to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed over the next several years. And your gift today, your sacrificial gift will help so much. 
It will equip people that cannot read in third world countries and people that are blind, millions of people around the world with these solar powered audio Bibles. It has the whole Bible on it and some of our other great material that will really change people's lives, transform them forever. When you support the ministry and you get the resources today, I want to personally thank you by sending you a few key messages that I know will give you the secrets to the power of thanks and how to rest in the finished work of Jesus. So here's my announcer to tell you more, and I'll be right back. With your timely gift today of $25 or more, 10 precious people will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. With your generous gift of $50 or more, 20 will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. With an extraordinary gift of $250 or more, 100 will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. As a special thank you for your support, Gregory Dickow wants to send you his teaching, The Purpose of Life, The Power of Thanks and Praise Collection, which includes today's teaching in its entirety for your timely gift of $25. Ask for offer 707A. Or for your very generous gift of $50 or more, he will include his teaching entitled, Pour Out Your Heart to God. Ask for offer 707B. With an extraordinary gift of $250 or more, we want to send you your very own solar-powered audio Bible as a reminder of your support, helping us reach 30 million people over the next five years. Plus, if you call today, we will include Gregory Dickow's anointed message, Your Struggle Has Ended, The Rest of Faith, along with his devotional, 30 Days of Rest. Just ask for offer 707C. Please don't wait. Gregory Dickow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call. Or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv. Well, I really want to encourage you, inspire you, even challenge you to do something in the next few moments that will matter for eternity. You see, our Christianity is best expressed as we share the gospel of Jesus with people around the world, but especially with those who have been persecuted, helpless, forgotten, minimized. Jesus said, whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done it unto me. That's why I need your urgent help today. Your gift makes it possible for me to get these powerful audio Bibles, solar powered into the hands of precious people who have been forgotten, people that can't read, people in third world countries, people that are blind. By getting this into their hands, they can hear the whole word of God and our greatest teachings that I know will change their lives forever. And don't forget to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm there and I'll do my very best to personally respond to each and every one of you that reaches out. Don't miss our next broadcast. Remember to set your DVR so you never miss one of them. Get this teaching today. It'll change your life forever. I can't wait to see you next time. God bless.